everyone, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashken Karpas-Frushan to discuss too much wokeness. You know, if we we should just take all of our outtakes <laughs> and just put that. I mean, we this channel would be like on fire. But okay, um, too much wokeness. Yeah. So I mean, what's the context? Basically, we we get this criticism once in a while when they're like, Watch Mojo, you guys are like social justice warriors, and you guys are such lefties, you commies. And I mean, I don't know if it's rocket science or you need. Yeah, I don't think you need to be a clairvoyant to figure out my views if I have any, but like I'm always surprised because I'm like, I don't think I'm that, you know. We're actually, you know, like I, I, I'm very hands-on with a lot of the writing and, and we're very mindful to not, to try to not come across biased. But the fact that we're Canadian, I think we just, our lens is already shifted to the I left. think because we're Canadian and over time, I also acknowledge because we do hire young folks. I've who, also stopped doing it, stopped, uh, I, now I don't care as much. Okay, interesting. Why don't you care as much? Because I don't think, oh, this is, okay. Because I think we sh are big enough that we should be able to take a stand. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily like... Not that we're taking stands. No, that's it. Like, I, I, I kind of go like, look, if there's something that we ought to take a stand, take the stand. You know, if there's something that merits us or we prefer to be objective, then that's the way to go. I don't view it as we need to be either Fox or MSNBC on the political no, spectrum. I, agree. I don't think we need to be, you know, on the social lens either, like either or. I'm very much a case by case kind of guy. Um, and I also don't like to run a culture where it's like I'm only going to recruit, hire, retain people that share my views. So I go, look, it's got to make sense. Now, the reason why, why I was like we should discuss this is because I always struggle with examples that I feel like are good examples. Meaning like when we did like top 10 reasons why Donald Trump would be a controversial president before he won. Is that he, what it was called? A uh, controversial candidate, president. Mm -hmm. But I, the, the, the argument was... It's a negative slant. And then when we did Top 10 Reasons Hillary Clinton is not a shoe in people said, well, you're assuming she's going to win. We're like, well, we're not assuming. She's expected to win. And in the end, she didn't. So we were kind of right. But in any case, in those, I go, no, I don't really think like we're being biased. But earlier today, um, I wasn't even on the thread. But basically, what was the, the, the topic that we were? It was, it was probably it was like hottest women of the decade or something right. like that. It's that a topic seems, I would that's watch. That's in our wheelhouse, right? Sure, of course. It's a topic. I, I it's a video I will watch. And what was the, who was who? What were we debating and why? So I guess Scarlett Johansson was an obvious choice or a potential choice for well, the she's, list. She's she's hot. She's well, viewed I mean, as hot. Of well, course, I'm kidding. It's yeah, I know, but I mean. But what was the issue? Acting wise, too. Um, yeah. uh, I think she had made some. I mean. She, she is a bit of a controversial figure, you know, because she has played whitewashed characters, but also I, I guess she said something like, I, I should be able to play or I could play a transgender character. Um, and a lot of people don't like it when she says stuff like that. Okay, so I think there's two layers there. One is, should she be banned from a list of hot people because she said something that offended people whether or not it is offensive or not. because This I, goes back to cancel culture. Okay, but should she be canceled from a hot list? That was the question I mean, we had to ask. I, I mean, it depends what the criteria for the list is. Okay. Cause, so, I mean, because when we do hot lists, it's not like, it's not solely based on their physical appearance. I agree. At least we tried. Not no, to. I agree, but it's it's driven up, like if it's a sexy actresses. Wait, is that hottest as in babe factor or hot as in they're in? I don't know. Okay, you don't know. Okay. I wasn't on the thread. Either. You weren't on the thread. Okay, no, but w the way I discussed it is I interpreted it as not hot as in like they're in demand. I viewed it literally as like attractive. Yeah, but even so, like when we write those, because like I usually voice them just so it's not creepy, uh, but um, so we write them in such a way that it's not just like. Oh my God, she like has... No, yeah, her, yeah. she's sexy. Her butt's yeah, amazing, her boobs like, are amazing. But also, that's, yeah, that's gross. We're not... Of course, we're not like that. Whatever channel but it is. But my decision was, look, I go, I think this is a good example of being like too woke, too much wokeness, where I was like, of course, if she's attractive, so long as she's not wearing, uh, you know, a clans outfit, well, you know, marching... that would not make her very attractive. That would not make her very attractive, but I was like, if she said something that people disagreed with, I don't think that should like rule her out from like a list of, frankly, either if she's in demand as an actress, which is a factual matter, mm -hmm. or she's a sexy babe, you know? And I was kind of like, 
I think we want to avoid going down that slippery slope. And yes, there is a limit that you don't cross. If she's like, if she's out there basically saying that like, you know, we need Nazis to come and rule America, you can make a decision that, okay, we rather just like kind of ignore this person, right? But I think if, if like somebody says something that historically an entire industry has operated on and is not illegal, so I'm not saying like, oh, the Me Too stuff, always part of the industry, but clearly illegal, just it wasn't necessarily like, you know, you didn't expose it to go. Um, then I don't think you should kind of like ban her because then I feel like it does become a bit too subjective and it never ends. Yeah. So for I me, mean, it, was, it could be addressed in the entry if you yeah, want. So like, that's, yeah, so yeah, okay, Scarlett Johansson maybe is a problematic character these days or whatever, um, but there's no. But she remains that, hot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, like every guy would want to have sex with her. You know, basically. I mean, that's not. I rolled I mean, just my a, eyes because I'm not on camera. But, but I mean, I'm just dumbing it down to kind of make the point that I think that's where we draw the line. Now, I do think there's a lot of publications that would not do that. I think like if you are Time Magazine, and let's say even if she won 15 awards, you may not put her as person of the year, you know, in a similar category, because you're afraid of the back backlash and all that. Well, but I mean, it point, is also easier to just not even include her in the conversation at all. But you can't do hottest actresses of the decade and exclude her, and then if you exclude her, it's because she said something that offended some people, and frankly, offended some people, not to paraphrase Chappelle, but like the, you know, again, not the people that have 20% of the alphabet. Like, I'm just saying, like, I understand why if we're going to go out there and say that we are objective, then you actually, that's the hard part. You have to follow it through and have it, you know, have a semblance of being objective. And so I did want to point that out because I, I do think, though, that this is where, this is why you have Donald Trump as president. Because th stuff like this gets hijacked by the Trumpists as the media doesn't get it, the media doesn't represent us, and just because at the end of the day, a vocal minority may be offended by something, and you just delete somebody from a list, which could be, you're hot, but it could also be top actresses, and that's what I'm getting at. This is actually not about the fact that Scarlett Johansson is hot, if you haven't figured it out. It's that if you exclude her from a hot actress, well then, you're gonna exclude her as well from a great actress, and you're gonna also exclude her from many other things, right? So that's kind of like, surprise, surprise, that's like the point that I'm trying to make. So I understand that we can get accused of many things, but that's like a good example of how I think we are actually kind of objective and we try to be not just neutral, but we try to kind of like still retain a sense of common sense in a time when a lot of publications won't have the courage because they're afraid of the backlash. And you know, there's next thing you know, you said cancel culture. There's like some meme about Procter & Gamble, how dare you run ads in time or time.com because they said so and so, and then Procter & Gamble has to yank yeah. $15 million worth of advertising, which then actually affects journalists and all that. So I'm just saying you guys have to be careful when you start to get on that cancel culture, which people roll their eyes, or like cancel culture doesn't exist, yada, yada. But I'm just saying like it does, you know, and it has repercussions. Um, okay, so to, to call us objective is a bit... We, like I think a lot of media, journalism included, is is moving towards subjective. There's a, there's an expression that like in America everybody will pay for an opinion, right? And so I've been very careful whenever I say we're objective, I go but parentheses. The second you do a list, you're being subjective. You're saying A is better than B. Like how are you being objective if you think about it? There's opinion. There's criteria. I think the point of the objectivity is you don't have an agenda in this case. Like, we don't have an agenda. We're not out here to go and topple somebody, or we're not going after uh, something, you know? Like, we'll, we'll call it, like, what I mean by that also, by we don't have an agenda, is I think, I, I don't think that, like, there's fine people on both sides, you know, like, in the Nazi thing. We had a list where we had to include or exclude a Nazi. It was a historical military planner leader. Mm. And I was like, what is the list? If we're kind of paying homage to like great military planners, okay, like if it's just their skillmanship, including a Nazi, but saying, but they're a Nazi and they weren't a good human being, that's one thing. But if you're kind of, you know, paying respects to great people and, you know, it's, it's more about the fiber of their character, then I don't care that they were great at plotting where the soldiers should go on a map, they're Nazis, you don't include them, right? So I think our goal is, 
I'm not saying you want to do both a climate change is real or not, when clearly the weather is so messed up that clearly something weird is happening. But, but also if, science says so. But science says so. But I think it's important that like, if you wanted to, if there were topics that ought to, or could be covered on both sides, I think as a platform, we would want to cover both sides. So in that sense, I think we're objective. Fair enough. That is a cool. good point, actually, the agenda thing. All right. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. It all makes sense oh. if you listen to the rationale behind it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you next time.